Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Organic Gardening located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And we're going to go over the real truth of how alfalfa really works as an organic fertilizer. And that is these two products here. One is alfalfa meal and one is alfalfa pellets. They are two completely different things. The reason why, I know they're both alfalfa, but they do not give the same amount of nutrients to your plant. The alfalfa pellets are far less. It's not equal to this. The reason why, it's not my opinion by any means. This is just how nature works. When alfalfa meal is grown, it is harvested prior to it going to seed. And that's very important because it's taking all that nitrogen that's inside the legume, those nodules on the roots. And I'll show you a picture of it. Now here's a fine example of some alfalfa roots and you can see the leaves in the background. Now here's some nodules here and here and some more over here. Here I typed into Google, how does legumes fix nitrogen? And the result is legumes Peas, vetches, clover, beans, and others, meaning alfalfa, grow in a symbiotic relationship with soil dwelling bacteria, and that is uh, rhizobium bacteria. Now that bacteria takes gaseous nitrogen from the air in the soil and feed this nitrogen to the legumes in exchange to plant provides carbohydrates to the bacteria. So how cool is that, that alfalfa, which is a legume, can take nitrogen out of the soil, out of the air in the soil, and convert it into plant available nitrogen through those nodules in the roots, and then share it with the rest of the plant. Now that to me is just totally amazing, but the other thing that we learned is that the plant, alfalfa and the clover and the other legumes actually feed. The soil doesn't feed it, the legume actually feeds that rhizobium bacteria that's making those uh, nitrogen available, it is feeding them carbohydrates. And like I've always said on my channel, plants feed the soil. Plants are part of the soil food web and helps grow bacteria and fungi in the soil so other things can come along and eat those particular things and release nutrients back to our plants. Just amazing how this all works and it's just fascinating and I'm learning so much every day and the reason I'm sharing this with you and a little side note, I was broke completely broke using other methods of growing things on my farm. It was costing me so much to put inputs on my farm. I don't care if it's chemical fertilizer you use or organic or something like that. It just, it's all about the soil biology. It's all about those microbes in the soil, changing things to make plants available, and that's called a soil food web. And once I learned this, my cost production went down immediately. And also, this is the same thing in your garden. If you understand the biology and how it works, people call them microbes, biology, soil, food web, it's all the same type of group of things. But to me, it is how nature worked before we thought that we had to start adding things back into our soil. So I'd like to share this with you. In alfalfa meal, we have a guarantee analysis of N, P, and K. And as in nitrogen, we have a 2.5 rating percentage in alfalfa meal. But we do not have that in our alfalfa pellets. Now, why is that different? Because alfalfa meal, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is harvested earlier before it goes to seed than pellets. Pellets are made to grow or to provide protein. It is grown to the fullest extent as a mature plant. Alfalfa is a mature plant than alfalfa meal. And the nitrogen is lost in here in the pellets because we're trying to make it into proteins. Once it's made it into proteins, it has very little nitrogen less. How much nitrogen less does it have? And people are going out and buying bags of alfalfa pellets thinking they're getting this amount of nitrogen in here. The pellets is anywhere from eight to 10% less, less than 2.5. So if you're buying alfalfa pellets, you're getting a, uh, let's say a nutrient value of 0.25. That's less than one, 0.25. Then also it can be a little bit higher. Let's say it will double it to 0.5. 
but it's far less than this. So let me give you some more information. Let me just zoom down here. Now we have these two diagrams here, and I'll give you a better close up here, but this is going to explain a, a little bit more what I'm trying to uh, suggest to you, but you, again, you should do your own research. So my first chart here on the left-hand side of your screen is just go down here and hopefully you can see it. It says young alfalfa hay. That's what our uh, alfalfa meal is made of, young alfalfa hay. This is a carbon to nitrogen ratio of that product and you can see it's 13 to 1. Now in just simple terms, there's a better definition I'm sure of it, but just as simple terms is how much carbon is in a product when it's harvested compared to nitrogen. Now nitrogen is always going to be one, it's a, it's a standard ratio, but you can see it's 13. Now when we go up here to mature alpha hay, which is a product that is used to make pellets because it wants to do it for protein, it's almost pretty much double. It's a 25 to 1 ratio, which means it takes longer and needs more nitrogen to break down that product over a period of time. And then it goes up in scale here. Now I grow a lot of winter rye on my farm and that's 82 to 1. It takes a lot of nitrogen to break it down or a lot of time to break it down. It's said differently, like I said, there's a better definition out there when I'm explaining to you. But I just wanna show you there's a difference between, let's say young alfalfa hay, which is 13 to one, and mature alpha hay, which is 25 to one. And also too, both of these charts are on my Facebook page. You can see a better, uh, clearer picture of it and a better understanding of it. So, now we have that. So let's bring over this other chart here. Now this is through an, uh, a book that was produced, uh, Gardening Myths. Now, hopefully, let's see here. On this side of the chart, and let me just put a couple pellets here. Now on this side of the chart, we have legumes. Legumes not, not flowering, freshy greens. Now you can see in the leaves and the stems, you have 60% of that nitrogen that the uh, legume is fixing from the roots up to the top of the plant is 60%. That's where you're getting the 2.5 in the alfalfa meal. Now, what it comes down to is here on your right hand side, which is your pellets, is legume mature, which was, as I said, on that other graph, which is 25 to one, percentage of nitrogen. What happens when all the nitrogen is in the root, it starts going up to the seeds. 70 to 90% of that nitrogen, percentage of nitrogen in the plant is lost to or goes into the seed of the plant. And that seed is not inside here on this, uh, whatchamacallit, on the pellets because it's lost. It's in the seed so they can grow next year. So what they're harvesting and making the pellets from, which is the proteins going up, is that the, the leaves and stem here is only containing eight to 10% of that original nitrogen that was in the plant, which is inside your pellets. So let me explain that again. It says on the bottom of this picture here, a legume offers the most nitrogen before it blooms. After the bean seeds have been harvested, only a small amount of nitrogen remains for the other plants. And again, only that here, the foliage or the leaves and stems only has 80% nitrogen, but it has a lot of protein left, and that's what the alfalfa pellets here is made for. So I hope I haven't disappointed you so far in giving you some information that might not you. So I hope I haven't disappointed you so far with this information that has, let's say, been different than other people saying things about alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets, especially the pellets. The pellets, like I said, is anywhere from eight to 10% less in value than your meal. That's why there's a price difference. Now, a lot of people also too have mentioned in my other video and where I went over this, and I was just trying to explain to you, is alfalfa meal is a far better product than alfalfa pellets. People are thinking they're getting the same thing, but it's not, and that's what I'm trying to show you here in these graphs. But the best thing is I got really good news for you, is since the pellets 
is about, let's say, 0.25, let's call it 0.5, a half a percentage of nitrogen. You can get something that's free of charge and you can collect it at coffee shops, and yes, I'm going there, coffee grounds. Coffee grounds is a 2% nitrogen that's available after it's being composted or mixed into your soil over time is that it's going to give that nitrogen off through the microbes in the soil. And both of these have to be broken down prior to its releasing all those nutrients into your soil also too. That's the way nature works. It has to be broken down. It has to be broken down by two groups of, let's say, microbes. The bacteria and fungi first eats it, absorbs it into their system, and then comes along another group or several groups of nematodes and protozoas that will eat those bacteria and fungi and then poop out the plant available nutrients to it. There's only two things on this planet, worm castings and rabbit manure that has gone through this process already. So when you buy it or receive it, it automatically feeds nutrients directly to your plants because it's been broken down. Everything has to go through the microbe cycle before it is delivered to your plants as plant available nutrients. So remember, you can go out and get coffee grounds for free is going to give you more nitrogen than the pellets and you don't have to buy it or track it down or go to your feed store you don't have to worry if it's a gmo product or not or anything else it is free to charge use coffee grounds have a carbon to nitrogen ratio which breaks down pretty quickly of a 20 to 1 and that's the same as um, age uh, animal manure that has been around for a while it has that has been let's say biologically uh, broken down to be available to your plants and that's the same thing with your coffee grounds it's the same ratio of 21 carbon to nitrogen ratio so that's a good thing all these graphs again are showed on my uh, Facebook page hope you look at them now again let's go over some more details about using alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets for uh, I also want to share this fun fact with you that if you google search something called nitrogen nodules color it will say as nodules grow in size they gradually turn pink to reddish in color indicating nitrogen fixation has started and i'll show you the figure in a little bit this pink or red color is caused by that bacteria similar to hemoglobin in the blood and that controls oxygen flow to the bacteria now let's open this up now there's different pictures online. Now here we have a very good cross section of those nodules that were cut open. And you can see here the color difference. The color indicates how much nitrogen has been, let's say, developed inside those nodules. And when you uh, grow alfalfa or other legumes, it is when all these nodules are showing a certain color that gives it the right amount of nitrogen to the top of the plant. It is just amazing. If there's no color in it, that means there's no nitrogen. It might be working fixing nitrogen, but it hasn't achieved it yet. And that's why showing these nodules, and that's how I learned that the plants that are growing in your soil, your legumes, if they're not showing this color and has left it, you have not, let's say, fixed the nitrogen in that nodule ahead of time to actually help your soil. And again, these will turn clear and send that nitrogen up to being changed to proteins that is used in alfalfa pellets. That means there's no nitrogen left anymore in the plant in the nodules and it's just that eight to ten percent that's left but all of it has been changed from nitrogen to protein to help animals and that's where they get their protein in nature just like we need protein in nature that this has been done that way and they can feed on those legumes out in the let's say natural development in nature and they can get their proteins that they need since we're talking about alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets, I also want to talk about making alfalfa tea. Now, there's one thing very important about making any type of tea that you want with your plants. It should be aerated. So let's start with some of the basics. If you have a five gallon bucket or any container and you're going to use tap water, it has chlorine in it, most likely. Now, this 
pertains to tap water only, not well water. Well water is fine and you don't have to do this. But if you have using tap water, what the main thing you should do is fill your bucket up first and at least wait 24 hours for that chlorine to become a gas again and then evaporate out of your uh, bucket or pail or any type of item that you're using. So now we have a clean source or clean water source to make the tea in. Believe it or not, these two products are not recommended to use as a tea. And I'll show you. On the website for um, the alfalfa meal by downtoearth.com, I'll show you on the computer, they do not recommend this to start with the tea. So a lot of people do this. They'll take X amount of meal or pellets and put it in a bucket and let it sit for two or three days. That is the wrong thing to do. You need to have this aerated. You need to have a, a pump, use a pump. And also, you know, you have your connection hose that goes from your pump and also some type of bubbling system here. This is a st bubbling stone and that will go in here to supply air to the water again. We want the water to be aerobic. That means it has air bubbles in it. If it's anaerobic, and a lot of people, and I see it on YouTube, are just putting these two products in there and they'll measure it out and they'll add water and they'll let it sit. That is going to go anaerobic, the lack of oxygen. And what that does, it grows the wrong type of bacteria inside the bucket. Now, there's gonna be a lot of people are gonna write in and say, well, listen, I've been doing it the other way, meaning just add X amount of uh, material to the bucket and let it sit outside and blah, blah, and it smells like else too. What you're doing is you're just equaling things out. So you're going to have a bad batch of tea and then you're going to put it into your good soil. But thank goodness that the uh, the way the planet works and also the microbiology do, it will take time and you're actually robbing your plants from the nutrients and you won't see it as much. But the good bacteria in the soil has to go immediately fight against the bad bacteria inside the bucket. So when you have really good garden soil with mulch on it and your uh, plants have been established for quite some time and you add this, thank goodness that there's actually good bacteria in your soil that will fight this. And, but you're actually just uh, kind of balancing it out. You're not really doing anything except watering your garden with some nice clean water. So keep that in mind. And let me show you now that the um, people from down to earth do not recommend it as a uh, tea to be used. Here I am on the website downtoearthfertilizer.com. I misspoke before. It's, you go to downtoearthfertilizer.com. Here we have our alfalfa meal. And we'll click on that. And let's go here to, we have the guarantee analysis. So I'm still on the down to earth fertilization website now.com. And this is underneath uh, fertilization questions and answers. And it's very specific. Can your dry fertilizers be used to make compost teas? Down to earth does not endorse the utilization of our box product fertilizers for the making of compost tea. So that kind of opens up a lot of questions. But if you read more, most of these materials are coarse, insoluble, and provide very little or negligible nutrients over the time frame of a tea brew. Now again, I see a lot of people out there making their uh, teas out of this and also other, the pellets, of course, but it doesn't really pan out the way you think it should. So again, be cautious, do your own research, and it should, whenever you make a tea, it should never smell like a very faint uh, smell of alcohol. That means it's gone anaerobic, which is a bad thing. Went over a lot of things today on alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets, but just to conclude everything, the amount that's in the pellets is about 10% less that's in the box. Now, you can decide what you think is best for you. And also too, using coffee grounds in your bed does not attract rodents as much as your alfalfa meal and your alfalfa pellets. For some reason, they smell that nice green smell when it gets activated by water, but 
you know, this again, it's your choice. So enjoy. Let me hear from you in the comments. And I thank you very much for always watching. And I, if there's something that I miss, I'd be more than happy to make another video. But looking forward to hearing from you and see what you think. I don't want to disappoint anybody. I've just been uh, doing this research for the last two weeks to make this video and probably went over at least 100 documents. And I always knew on the farm and a long time ago that you always, if you want to put nitrogen back in the ground, you always cut your cover crop of legumes prior to it going to seed or producing. If you were growing, let's say, soybeans or uh, cow peas, you always cut it before flower so you get the total amount of nitrogen that's in the legume to go back into the soil or into the foliage. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again shortly. Enjoy gardening. Thanks. Bye.